we are going to use Azure Cosmos DB data migration tool to migrate some SQL data from Azure SQL database into Azure Cosmos DB. And then we are going to use the SQL syntax to query this data in Azure Cosmos DB. This is an interesting demo, so let's get started. Okay, now let's go ahead and import some data from another data store to Azure Cosmos DB. I already have an Azure SQL database instance with some sample data in it. Let's go ahead and check it out. So as you can see, I already have provisioned an Azure SQL database instance called Cosmos SQL Demo 01 and created a database in it. The database name is Source01. What we are going to do in the rest of this demo is to import some data from the products table into a collection in Azure Cosmos DB SQL API. And as you can see, I already have a query here which defines the data I am going to import. So in this query, I'm simply selecting a few fields from the product table. So I'm choosing product ID, name, product number, color, standard cost, list price, size and weight properties from the product table. I am also selecting the product category ID, but I am projecting it into a new name called category.categoryID. So this will be mapped to a nested property in Azure Cosmos DB. We will take a look at this shortly in the migration process. So now that I have my data, let's go ahead and get the data migration tool. I am in the Microsoft's documentation website. I'm going to add a link to this page in the course files. So if I scroll down to the installation section, I have the option to go ahead and check out the repository which holds the code for this migration tool or simply download a pre-compiled binary. So if you click on that, you will be downloading a zip file. I already downloaded the zip file and extracted it into a folder. Let's go and check it out. So if you extract the zip file you downloaded, you will see something like this. If you scroll down, you will find a file named dtui.exe. Let's click on that. And my data migration tool is ready to be used. Let's go ahead and configure our migration. First, click on the source information. Here you need to specify what is your data source which you are trying to import from. If I click on the import from dropdown, you see I have various data sources. I can import from JSON file, MongoDB, SQL Server, CSV files, Azure Table, DynamoDB, HBase, and also other Azure Cosmos DB instances. In our case, we are importing from SQL. So let's click on that. In the next step, I need to specify a connection string. Click on the source database. Under settings, click on connection strings, and I'm going to grab this connection string. Please keep in mind that you need to replace the user ID and the password section in this connection string before being able to use it. I have already done that, so let's go ahead and put the updated connection string into the migration tool. So now that I have the connection string pasted in, let's go ahead and verify that our connection works. Click on the verify button, and as you can see, the migration tool connected to the SQL database. In the next step, you need to specify the query you want to use to select your data to migrate. So let's go back to SQL Server Management Studio and grab our query. So simply select the query and paste it in here. And as the last setting, you need to specify the nesting separator. It is used if you are going to create nested documents in your Cosmos DB. So as you remembered, I am selecting the last property, product category ID, as category.categoryID. So my nested separator here will be a dot. Let's click on next. So here I need to configure my destination database. So let's go back to the Azure portal and grab the connection string for my Cosmos DB database. So click on Azure Cosmos DB, select my database, scroll down and under settings, click on keys. And I'm going to grab the primary connection string here. So let's paste it in. There is one last step I need to do. The default connection string I get from Azure Portal doesn't include the database name. But as you can see here, I need to specify the name of the database as well. So let's go back and grab the database name quickly. Click on Data Explorer, and I'm going to grab the name of the database. Let's go back and add it at the end. So database equals the name of our database. And let's click on Verify. And as you can see, the migration tool successfully connected to the Azure Cosmos DB as well. In the next step, you need to specify the name of the collection you want to create for the migrated data. The SQL database table was called products. 
So let's keep the same name in Azure Cosmos DB. The next step is important. You need to choose a partition key for this new collection. So I need to go back and look at this data and choose the best partition key I can think of. For the data I'm selecting here, there is no obvious partition key to be selected. So I'm going to simply use the color property as the partition key. So let's go back and put that in. And if you remember, we can specify the throughput at the collection level as well. And 1000 is more than enough for our demo. And in the last step, we need to specify the field we are going to use as the item ID. So if I go back to my data again, product ID makes more sense to be used as the ID. So let's grab the name, go back and put this property here. There are more advanced options which can be used to have more control over your data migration. For example, if I click on advanced options and I scroll down, I can specify the indexing policy for my new collection. By default, all the fields in Azure Cosmos DB containers will be indexed. So let's close that and click next. And here I need to specify a path to an error log file. So in case the migration fails, the error will be logged here. So I'm going to put cclone backslash migration logs.txt and I'm going to log all the errors. Click next. Here you have the option to review all the settings you put for your migration and click on previous and tweak them if needed. In my case, I'm okay with all the settings I put for the migration. So I simply click on import. And let's wait for the migration to complete. Okay, looks like the migration is complete. And as you can see, I have 295 records transferred and the whole migration took about five seconds. So now let's go back to Cosmos DB and see if we have got some data. So I simply click on refresh, open my database. And as you can see, I have a products collection. Let's open that, click on items. I have a few products imported for me. Let's have a closer look into one of the products. So all the simple fields I selected are imported. I also have a nested document for the category property. This is the same category dot category ID we selected in the source database. And because we put dot as the nesting delimiter, the import process created a nested document for me. So now let's go ahead and run a few SQL queries. Click on the three dots in front of your collection and select new SQL query. First, let's go ahead and run the default query, which is select star from C. And in this context, C will be the current collection. Click on execute query. And as you can see, all the documents in this collection are selected. Let's close my tree panel so we have more room to work with. And let's go ahead and update our query. For example, what if I need to choose only a single property or a group of properties instead of all of them? Let's go ahead and choose the product number. So I simply change this query to C dot product number and let's execute this query now. And as you can see, this time all the product numbers are selected for me. You can also add conditions to your query. For example, I am going to choose product numbers only if the child category ID is equal to six. Click on execute query and this time I get much less documents back. And finally, you can use this syntax to get the count of the objects meeting your condition. So you select value of count one from your current collection following your condition. So in my case, I should get 43 and here we go. I have added a few documents to the course resource file in case you want to read more about Azure Cosmos DB SQL syntax. So two notes before concluding the demo. The first note is you don't have to use Azure SQL database as your data source. As you saw, you can use JSON files, CSV files, MongoDB, and any other data source. You can also use a local instance of SQL Server on your machine. And secondly, please make sure you go ahead and clean up any resource you create for this demo, including Azure SQL database and Azure Cosmos DB accounts you don't use. You don't want to get charged for the resources you don't use or you forgot to clean up. And this concludes our demo. Thanks very much.